So now for our last speaker of today, actually, um, Paula Biveson from the Baltic Sea Action Group. And now we will hear a bit about how a different kind of network can, walk, can work and contribute oh, to this. You'll be talking about enhancing innovative cooperation, about partnerships. So, um, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I know the Baltic Sea Action Group has also been around for quite some time. So it's again a Finnish initiative who's taken the lead. This is interesting. <laughs> and your focus today will be about nutrient cycling and mitigate, mitigate uh, eutrophication. Okay. Please, Paula, yeah. it's yours. Okay. Hello, thank you for, for inviting me here to talk about uh, our work under the title. It seems that uh, we Finns have something in similar because some of the methods sounds quite like. Uh, that's in Finnish it's called talkot, but it would uh, translate to joint effort or something like that. Okay, so uh, uh, we are an independent, um, let's see, sorry. We are an independent foundation working uh, based in Finland, although I work uh, from Stockholm and then we of course have cooperation over the Baltic Sea. And our aim is to well, just save the Baltic Sea. And how do we work? So uh, we are not really financing projects, but we are rather trying to motivate those who have knowledge or uh, solutions or governing power to make changes. And uh, we inspire them to make commitments. And that part is, is kind of a very similar. But uh, these commitments then can be uh, added to our commitment bank so that they would, be, they would be concrete, they are public. So that means that the uh, organizations are more committed to do that. And then <clears throat> also the governments can do uh, commitments. And the first time we were uh, presenting the commitments were in the Baltic Sea Action Summit in Helsinki in 2010. And here are maybe you recognize some of these faces. And uh, uh, these big summits, the other one was held in St. Petersburg in 2013. But they are just the, the, they are not the aim, they are just a tool to work. And I can't be help, help without mentioning that there's a gentleman on the left side, right hand side, sorry. And uh, I, Putin promised the, to, that the Kaliningrad waste re, wastewater treatment plant would finally start functioning. And he actually is in, like working now. But then the Finnish, um, in this context, the Finnish uh, commitment is quite important because uh, the promise was that Finland will become the model country for nutrient recycling. And why, why this? So everybody here knows the uh, problem with eutrophication. But uh, in order to, that, uh, to do something for the problem, so we need to uh, stop the leaking from the whole nutrient cycle. And uh, uh, in here I would like to mention just this little side thing that in here when we are talking about nutrient cycling, it quite often people are immediately thinking about sewage sludge. But if you think about uh, animal farming, so the, the available uh, nitrogen from manure is actually 8 million tons per year in the EU level. And then uh, sewage sludge is only three. And phosphorus, the same figures are 1.8 from manure and uh, 0 0.3 from sewage sludge. So the important part is really to work, uh, start with the animal manure. Okay, so when we close, uh, when we see the, the value of nutrients and, and stop le um, letting them to leach to the waters, so uh, that's the way how we can uh, solve the eutrophication problem. Well, at least external loading, not the internal, which we already saw in, in others, that it's really a big deal. Okay, so the Finnish government really um, they are true to their commitment so that they, they had made the, this year, or sorry, 16, the government key project 
uh, one of the government key projects is the nutrient cycling. And then they're really they're giving resources for that. And uh, that is done with different kind of projects and different kind of financing uh, uh, platforms. Uh, but one example which I'm going to talk about is Breakthrough for Nutrient Cycling, an ecosystem of, of business cl clusters. <coughs> Sorry. And what is it? There is a symbiotic partnership network. It's 50 to 60 participants, their companies, institutes, municipalities, research uh, centers. And uh, they have, uh, there's inside of that is 10 different development programs led by companies. And the aim is to create new business opportunities because the only way to, to stop leaching, or not the only way, but the really important way is to, to see the value of nutrients and, the, and see how, how much it can be as, as a business-wise. And uh, <clears throat> there are, I think I'm gonna jump over this. Well, I can just, uh, there are f four different areas, the best field in the world. That means that they're trying to uh, improve the soil structure, carbon to soil, and manure, biogas, and then fertilizers of the future. But then the important part is, is the number five underneath, that the brand, there needs to be also a, a nutrient recycling brand and a phenomenon with that. And then I will give you an example of what these could be. So, for example, UPM is part, and then ha they have committed that uh, they will uh, use recycled nutrients as, uh, in their biological wastewater treatment plants. And this sounds a bit funny, but they really need the effluents uh, contain so so little nutrients that th they need to be added so that the the biological w wastewater treatment uh, keeps the bacteria alive. Uh, so th there is somebody who has a demand for organic <coughs> organic fertilizers, sorry. And then Valio, everybody here knows Valio with Ayla. Oh, thanks. <coughs> so they are using the, or introducing the me similar kind of membrane technology they are using in the milk production. So uh, in manure handling, and with these membranes, uh, it's possible to separate different substan stu substances and especially water from manure. And uh, the problem with using manure is always that uh, if it's still wet, it, it, the transportation cost is, is extreme, extreme and, and you really can't handle it, the amounts that, that need to be handled. Then there are others uh, like VTT, they have this resource container come, which is coming actually from the industrial sector and they have now developed it so that it will be um, um, this kind of physical chemical um, system where you can, uh, you can um, implement in, 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 in places like, like in, a, in an archipelago. And they will test it in, in Barakas, which is in the southwest Finland. So this, uh, it, with cooperation with Barkas Commune. And then as an example of what kind of, like this is such a wide area, is Vec Alkaline. They are uh, recovering the nutrients from the batteries, used batteries. There are others, Punkalainen municipality. There's lots and lots of pigs and, and meat industry in there. And they are all very aware of the nutrient problem. and. Uh, they really have decided that they will be the forerunner for nutrient recycling. So it means that they, they, they will com improve their local bioenergy sector. They have changed all their views and how and see that how they can uh, in everywhere see the, the value of nutrients and anyway circular the economy. They will also, they are already a shareholder in different bio companies and they will set later on um, build up a companies to, to work with these development processes. And uh, the whole commune is really, it's, it's lovely to see how they are really driving this. And then the city of Kalajoki, which is on the, um, uh, on the, in this, uh, no, beach, 
no, strandområde. Swedish <laughs> comes true. Yeah, uh, so they have, um, they have developed this innovative plant growing platform created with the manure for fur animals and cattle. So of course we don't necessarily take now stand about the, or uh, not necessarily like so much about the uh, uh, fur animal business, but anyway, they, their manure needs to be dealt in some way. And this is a really innovative way of how to, to utilize that in the uh, either private or commercial gardening. And then there's, of course, uh, close to the first speaker, the Helsinki Region Environmental Services Authorities are dealing with the wastewater treatment process. So they have tried to uh, develop a system where, where the, wastewater, the phosphorus is recovered during the treatment instead of recovering it from the residue. And that would give like uh, um, uh, produce a, a way to produce organic fertilizers which are free from hazardous substances. And, and that really would have a global um, demand. So th then we of course have a lo lot of more different, uh, not necessarily in companies which are known here, but a lot of uh, technolo technology providers and, and such. But what do these companies then get from, from being in part of the uh, nutrient cycling ecosystem? So they could do all of this on their own, certainly, but it's easier to do it in, in cooperation with others. We are trying to give them a uh, platform where they can meet and talk and, and cooperate. And there are a lot of, uh, especially with companies, they already are developing something which is not yet public, but they can talk it with to, to uh, partners or potential business partners. And then of course there are uh, possibilities to pilot and, and do demos, like, like in communes or, or um, uh, in other places, then uh, to follow and affect the regulatory system. That's quite difficult for com uh, um, companies because they are not used to follow that so well as, like for example now in EU Parliament they are discussing about the uh, fertilizer directive and we are trying to follow up that and, and give the information to all of the whole group. And then of course the, uh, this brand, if you're part of the ecosystem service like uh, this uh, ecosystem network, so it's it's a brand of itself, and then it helps the brand, uh, the company, and when applying financing from different sources, this ecosystem um, service uh, business network is financed by Tekes, which is uh, equivalent to Vinnova, and we are planning to going international, so if there's an, anything you want to know about that, so just contact me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Maybe just one sort of uh, follow-up question. Um, as you said, I mean, <coughs> nutrient recycling is the thing. I mean, we yeah. talk about circular economy at the EU level, etc., but when we have these discussions, we come to the, to, the, to the discussion whether or not we can solve this within the agriculture system that we have. Uh, I mean, we all are all aware that we have uh, huge areas where there are too, many, too much livestock yeah. in relation to plant production. This is a uh, spatial distribution, etc. Would you say that this kind of discussion of changing the system, is that also part of what you work with? Or is oh, it yes. more like, yes. you know, tweaking within the system? Yeah, the obstacle is that the, the whole system is geared to uh, in a linear economy way, so that it's it, it's not been thought that um, that uh, nutrient or or manure or sewage sludge that kind of biomass is, is a, they are more like something that we need to dispose and not as as a like a opportunity and this. Thinking has, of course, been changing due to many very good um, organizations who have been working with that, and and also due to the fact that we just have to do it. And uh, but th there are still obstacles, and of course, there's a lot of uh, 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 research that needs to be done because, especially with the sewage sludge, you can't just use it like that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of is happening, but I think that the 
attitude has started to change, and therefore, um, what I'm really waiting is is uh, the European Parliament that what kind of uh, possibility they will give uh, in the under the um, fertilizer directive that uh, does it really have give competitive ad advantage for organic or recycled fertilizers or is it something that doesn't happen really yes yeah we can talk about that for over dinner maybe that's yeah I love this discussion please sir, the floor is yours do you have any comments <coughs> or questions there's a question oh sorry I have to say that uh, I don't know exactly what kind of batteries, but I, if you are interested, I can give you the contact with the REC Alkaline. Okay, so this was a question about recycling from batteries, so we'll yeah. just make for the filming. Thank you ever so much, uh, and a warm hand for Paula as well, and you can oh. go to Brigham. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.